for wins City in Michigan on the shore of Lake Michigan. And we're just in time for the big game, a high school football rivalry between Traverse City and Muskegon that dates back to 1902. We'll have the story for you coming up on SSA. ESPN presents the youth of America doing their best on Scholastic Sports America. ESPN Scholastic Sports America is brought to you by McDonald's, home of the new McDonald's guarantee. And by Diet Coke. There's just one just for the taste. Muskegon is just, it's like God and the devil. I want to beat him. I mean, I just want to I want to kill him. I don't really do. Hey. It's like the Notre Dame-Michigan game or the Oklahoma-Texas game. The records don't matter. It's another Friday night matchup in the rivalry between the Traverse City Trojans and the Big Reds of Muskegon. A Michigan rivalry that stretches back over 90 years. A rivalry that began right here on Traverse City's home turf, Thoroughby Field. Not much has changed since these two first started fighting it out back in 1902. Even the original white fence still lines the field. And on the day we arrived, we could hear and feel the intensity of this rivalry. When I sit there and say, Muskegon to you, what do you think? Hard hitting. Um, the game means everything to us. It's the most important game of our season. Um, yes, there are other big games, but it's tradition, you know, to play Muskegon. This is our make or break game right here. We come off a good win last night, last week with Birmingham, Brother Rice, and this game is just if we win this, we have a good shot at making playoffs, and, and who knows how far we can go. I came from a real small town, and I had no, no clue of what a big game was. You know, we had, most we have, like, 200 or so fans at our games, but then when I came to the Traverse City Muskegon game, it, it was overwhelming. I guess that's the best way to describe the rivalry in the football tradition in Traverse City. Overwhelming. And imagine what it must be like to guide this overwhelming program. Coach Roger Wood is in his first year as head coach of the Trojans, but he's not new to the team. He was their defensive coach for over 20 years. He took over from Coach Jim Uli, the Trojan leader for the past 25 years and a man that led Traverse City to three state titles. Replacing such a legend and leading his program could overwhelm some coaches not go to what I think there's an obligation when you take the head coaching job at Traverse City you've got an obligation to try to maintain the tradition but also the quality of the program and the integrity of the program and that's what we've had here for years we have tremendous community support and uh, you read some horror stories in some communities where you have an off year you know that you find for sale signs on your lawn and that type of thing we don't have that I mean we've had some bad years we don't win every year but uh, our community and our parents have really backed us and uh, we're most appreciative of that but we try to do a good job Roger's been with me for 20 years, and we've got uh, other coaches that have been with us for 30 years, so there's no uh, change in philosophy or whatever, and, and uh, that makes me good, uh, you know, to see that uh, it's in good hands, and that, that, that's comforting. And the hometown fans must feel pretty comfortable with the change, as they have done for years. They lined up for the 3,000 season tickets sold each year, days in advance. And the school's enthusiasm is pretty comfortable, too. They were going crazy at this pep rally just prior to the big game. <laughs> Thoroughby Field. It's a grand old stadium that's seen many games, including the original game between Traverse City and Muskegon back in 1902. Now, they'll fit about 9,000 in this place, and they expect it to be packed tonight, no doubt about that. Of the thousands on hand, hundreds have actually participated in a Traverse City-Muskegon rivalry in years gone by. And of those hundreds, there will be a select few with an even keener interest in tonight's game. Because with all the emotions that come with this rivalry, they've been able to share those emotions with someone playing on the field, their sons. That's right. This year's team has several players whose fathers also played for the Trojans and who also played in the big one versus Muskegon. 
it's all or nothing, baby. And uh, my dad understands that too. And I don't feel any pressure at all for my dad. Um, he just encourages me, um, you know, tells me to go out there and do my best in whatever I do, you know, football or not. The thrill it is to see one of my children out there playing, and it immediately makes me 17 or 16 again. Hey, who wouldn't, when you're 65 and have grandchildren, want to feel you're 16 or 17 again on a Friday evening? I always wanted to play Muskegon because my dad played in, for the Trojans. And uh, in 1975, um, he played in their homecoming game, which is against Muskegon. They beat him 40 to 12. And last night, I was looking at his yearbook, and I was looking at all the pictures and stuff, and it really pumped me up a lot. Last night, we sat down for probably a couple hours going through my old yearbook, uh, discussing everything, going through what the floats were from the senior class, junior class, sophomore class. Uh, pretty explicit. You get the idea that uh, the Big Reds are definitely the biggest game of the year. I don't care if we were 0-8 uh, and, and the ninth game was with the Big Reds. That would be, you'd see 8,000 people out here. And this 92 squad has a very special father-son duo continuing the tradition. Paul Tompkins is a starting tackle and he's coached by his father, Bud, who played on Trojan teams over 40 years ago. It's, it's hard to deal with sometimes because he brings practice home, and if I don't have a good practice, you know, I hear about it at the dinner table and stuff, but if I had a good practice, you know, you made a good block here, and you know, bad block there, do this better, do that better. I'm excited for him, thrilled for him, because he's getting to experience those things that I experienced many years ago, but on a bigger level. We didn't have the seating capacity. Football was big then, but it's not, not like it is today. So I'll be very thrilled that he's experiencing Traverse City football at its finest. So after all the fans had filled the stadium, and with their fathers watching, the latest version of the Trojan horse took the field to do battle with an old opponent one more time. In the first quarter, Jason Kashatza takes it in from the 17, and on their first series, Traverse City takes the lead 7-0 for the rest of the first quarter and most of the second, this one would be a war. Then with 53 seconds left in the half, Ricky McGowan scores from the one, and the teams would go into the locker room knotted at seven apiece. Third quarter now. McGowan gives the Big Reds the lead again from the one-yard line. 14-7 Muskegon. Also in the third, Traverse City thinks they get the equalizer, but Holding brings it back. Hard luck breaks the back of Traverse City. But the Trojans get lucky. Under four minutes to go, linebacker Chris Nido recovers the fumble. And four plays later, Brandon Sanborn from Craig Gunderson. And we're all even at 14. And that's how they would end regulation. In OT, Michigan rules place the ball on the 10. And each team gets four cracks to score. Touchdown or field goal. Traverse City takes the ball first. And on their third try, Gunderson finds Sanborn. The PAT good. And it's 21-14, Traverse City Trojans. Muskegon tries to do the same thing, but quarterback Paul Young delivers this one right into the hands of Traverse City defensive back Justin Lewenberger. Another great one goes into the books. It's over. Traverse City hangs on to win the war of 92 against Muskegon, 21 to 14. It's just a classical game with Muskegon and Traverse City, and it's never over until it's over. All right, here's to wishing that the rivalry between Traverse City and Muskegon continues for many more years. Keep it up, guys. It's a good one. When we come back here on SSA, we'll tee it up at the national championship. We'll introduce you to the top young golfers in the country. And a little later on in the show, we'll take a look at the latest Classic Sports America Super 10 football rankings. Stick around. More SSA after this.